Hi everybody and welcome back to my vlog, my channel and on the bench today we have the Quad 405 and this time it's like a revised edition and this one has the I think these are uh, two four sixes um, but they're the uh, silicon transistors rather than the TO3 packages which were the metal the old type metal so you'd think and you'd hope that inherently with the new uh, packages you will get a, um, a hopefully a bit of a better bit of a better response from it all around this is what the circuit looks like built up very nice very clean um, we have our connections, we've got a negative coming in here, feeding the negative um, side of our power supply. We've got the positive side of the power supply here, and here, let me just move this out slightly, oops, this thing always does it a different way, and here we have the virtual ground going to the ground, but that also goes to the dummy load negative side it also uh, this is the virtual ground connecting it this red and this black come from a power supply we've got the dummy low side and it's also the output um, for the speaker of course that's where the, the dummy low is connected to and here we have the output itself uh, to the speaker which is going to this side of the dummy load and this part of the scope input side we just have from our wave gen and we're using the I get that in the picture. The Analog Discovery 2 from Digilin. It's uh, you know it's, it's just better for these sort of jobs. One, it's a um, it's a narrower bandwidth on it, frequency on it, so it's less likely to pick up other noises. And two, um, it's 14 bit, which works out better than the 8 bit oscilloscopes. It can see a bit more depthy into the uh, noise levels and everything. All right, so I've got that connected to my power supply. Uh, please forgive, it's a very busy bench and I don't have time to put every single thing back when I'm using it, so things just tend to get pushed out of the way. 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago, there was a, a quad on here and uh, that had to be quickly put back together again. And, um, and now, it's, now it's like this, so it's just a busy bench. So we connect up the power supply there I'm just gonna move my tripod and screen here yeah? so I can just hopefully get past my cat who's down on my right hand side, right down there by the floor. Great stuff where I can run him over with my chair. And right, just before we do that, we're gonna look at the screen and we're gonna see what we've actually got here. So you should be able to see there on the screen now, AliExpress at the minute, there's um, a 33% reduction. I don't think these were over 30, 30 pounds 97 uh, for years. Americans out there, it's gonna be nah, roughly the same. We tend to get the same price in dollars. You buy for stuff over there and we get charged pounds. And uh, I suppose that's because of our taxes and everything else. I'm, I'm not sure, but we seem to charge more, but never mind. Um, so yeah, I bought the kits. Personally, I prefer the way I you know, put the things on in the kits, I'll make sure they're all made. It's neat, like this would just never be any good for me where this is raised one part of the board. Not, yeah, it's gotta be, it's gotta be neat for me. We've got, oh, is that gonna let me change that? Is that gonna let me change that? No, okay, oh, here we go, here we go. So this is the audio precision, what it states. Uh, so here's our one kilohertz input signal. Uh, you see that on there, and it's showing a very, very low noise floor. And we've got a little bit of a summit there at 15k, but mm, it's quite often see those sort of things. So that's nice, that looks very, very nice indeed. Here's the frequency response, and as we can see, about 20 kilohertz, which most of us won't be able to listen to anyway. Uh, we've got a um, minus 1.5 dB against the voltage reference and then it comes up it sits underneath the line uh, that could just be because the way the scaling is done here even though it looks yeah it's because the way the scaling has been done here you'd think they'd do it so it was like three each side or two each side so that zero was right in the middle and this line would go along with the zero maybe uh, 
they got the reasons for doing it like that, I don't know. But over here, see, uh, we got a, this is 0.5, so at 15 kilohertz, let's say, between the 10 and the 20 there, it drops down 0.5, and at uh, 20 kilohertz, we're down to, I think that's one, yeah, minus one dB. Well, that's good now, the sunlight's coming through, and we can see flashing on my other, on my other screen, but never mind. Uh, so like I say, £20.75. You can get all this of AliExpress. There's other things out there. So what's it say about power-wise? Uh, the kit consists of two dual channel boards, including all components of high power tubes as well as insulation sheets and particles. All parts are brand new and genuine. A single amplification transistor adopts the original imported BC556 and the 5551 and the 5401 audio dedicated signal transistors, the LM301A, uh, brand new uh, NS, which is industrial semiconductors. All resistors are made of genuine metal film, resistor copper pins with 1% accuracy, including high power resistors. The power transistor adopts a brand new imported ST2SC5200 uh, power transistor. Uh, so we got the drive, the driver tubes KTA 1659. The inductance is manually measured with a precision digital bridge accurate to 0 0.01 microhenry, 0.1% accuracy. There, power supply voltage is or equal in to uh, plus minus 30 volts, or it wants less than or equal in to plus minus 50 volts. PCB size is 55 millimeter, 75 millimeter wide, and the power can go in as 50 watts to 100 watts at eight ohms. Kits loose requires, yeah. So that's and now we're just going to get the same information. So let's just you know get past that. There you go. Look, you get to see the kit there. Very nice. And I'm just going to present you with all the parts. Very good. And of course, you get both channels. So you got a stereo going on there. All right, let's get out of this. We are now in. Windows, audio analyzer uh, suite uh, provided by Jake at the made, at the stuff made, which is an invaluable piece of kit here. And I can't wait for the new one to come out. And um, he needs full recognition for what he does there. He's absolutely brilliant. Uh, right, so uh, as we can see, we got this on the go now. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my power supply to power this one. And I'm sorry if you can't see the screen very well over there, because of the way the sunlight's coming through. It's nice to see that we're not flickering anymore. Sometimes we get the flicker come through. So what I'm going to do is basically I'm going to turn it on. So I've got both sides on. So we've got a negative and positive supply here. And I'm just going to gently ramp this up because I've not uh, turned this on for a while and just make sure there's no issues with it. I have checked and double checked my cables, so we should be okay. And as I take that up, I can see that, uh, yeah, we're fine. We're not drawing any more than what would be expected. Okay, so I'm just going to let that uh, just settle for a minute or two. Don't worry about it. I'm going to I'll skip forward on that and I will also try and get rid of the flicker. So guys, uh, we've got this set up. This is set up now, uh, 10 to 30 kilohertz and we've got steps, averages, 8 ohms, 0.2 uh, volts, channel 1, total harmonic distortion and the noise. Let's run that. All right, so I'm uh, not quite sure what's going on here. On, on this, if you look at the spectrum analyzer down here, we can see that the noise level has gone up. You know, I saw this minus 60, uh, 0.5 dBr there at, uh, at one, one kilohertz. Well, it's not quite that, is it? It's 899.7 uh, hertz. Not quite one kilohertz. Uh, all right, you know, we've seen better. That does look a bit funny. I've got two channels, two of these channels made up, so I might check out the other one and just see if it is, you know, uh, uh, the, the same. So let's just get rid of the noise. And we can see here that at 20 kilohertz, uh, that's that's looking pretty good. That's 0 0.07. Uh, that is 
pretty good. Uh, we get down to just this little bit before we got our thing. We've got 0 0.05. This, unfortunately, is 0 0.123. Down here, again, 0 0.05. There, again, on that peak, 0 0.0, 0 0.10. Uh, the lowest part is pretty much here, which is 0 0.04, which I suppose does give the classification for like hi-fi quality down there. Let's have a quick look at the second harmonic. Okay, that's pretty good. Highest peak there is 0 0.06, 0 0.07, 0 0.08. Now about the third harmonic. Ooh. Wow, yeah, this is, um, well, this is a little bit strange. I'm on zero two and down here. Wow, well, look at this. Look, uh, zero point zero zero one two one. Oh, imagine if we could just use that for the advertising, I'd make it look pretty cool. Yeah, uh, so that's that's what that looks like. I'm sorry I can't uh, do anything about the way that is. Um, I'm not exactly sure why it looks like this here. Um, I'm going to have to go and look at some other videos, maybe if people have done tests on this, and just see what theirs looks like. So let me have a quick look at our... Um, well, we could do the power versus... Or we could have a quick look at the scope. And we can stick that into square wave channel one again at the same level going in point two of a volt rms and uh, 100 uh, 1000 hertz so let's just do a single hit on that and take a peek oh we've got a bit of treble boost there and uh, just sloping off a little bit on the on the base side of things but not much nothing worth you really talking about is it's not uh let's go down to a hundred. Take a quick peek at that. And um, alright, well you know it's uh it's not as good as what it could be, but I don't think that's particularly too terrible either. They've got these little peaks here, this means that there's a little bit of an added treble. Um, let's just bring it down to let's say uh, well we're going to look at 20 anyway just because that's the audio range no other reason and just take a quick peek at that all right yeah that's um, that's not working out so well is it it's uh, not working out so well I'm not sure if that's phase shift or not mm. all right let's uh, let's have a look at Let's have a look at 40. My speakers go to 35 hertz. Let's just take a peek at 40. All right, I mean, it's not brilliant, but it's not not that terribly bad either. I don't, you know, I, I don't seem to be as impressed with this. I'm going to go 60 now here on the hertz. Quite a few people got speakers that go down 60 hertz. That's not too bad. It could be worse. It just dropped off all the way down here. Um, hey, you know, I'm just showing you. I'm, that, 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 that's all that's going on here. I'm just showing you. So, uh, I just wonder why. I can't. I don't know if this is actually performing worse than the other ones with the TO3 transistors on the old ones. Uh, I don't. I don't know. But let's just let's have a look at 500 uh, hertz here. Let me get that. Yeah, you know, it's looking around about the same as the thousand. So let's go up to uh, 10 kilohertz. Oh, let's do five actually. Um, five kilohertz, not 50,000, but five kilohertz. Let's just think we're shot on there. Mm, all right, this, uh, again, that, that bit of treble is always in there, isn't it? It's always got a little bit of that extra brightness going on. Not much, but you know, it's, it is added brightness. Uh, we'll look at 10 now. And do a single shot on that. 
uh, look at 20. Ooh. Oh, that's not very good. Bit of crossover. Uh, there, let's just take it to 30 and just see uh, what we got going on there. Single hit. Mm -hmm. Almost got a sine wave, a bit of notching, a bit of uh, about there. But we take a peek at the frequency response. Same values on the power and everything again. Uh, I'm just going to bring this down so it's easier to read for us all. So they are equal amount of dB, 3 dB, negative, and then 3 dB. Uh, yeah, three, yeah, yeah, you'll see the way it, it's done here. All right then, oh, you know, that's not too bad. Uh, if we look over here at the 20 kilohertz, I do believe it said 0.5 on theirs and it's 0.6 here. Uh, and if we get up to our 30 kilohertz, 28, 0.1, yeah, see, that's pretty good. It raises a little bit here, but I think that's a little tiny bit of treble we can see in the square wave. And what we got on it, we start dropping off 0.3, and that's at 20, 20 kilohertz, you see. So that's not bad there. That's at 30 kilohertz, 0. Point, uh, I keep saying 0, is 0. Uh, 0. 0.86. So all in all, I mean, it's not bad across, across there. It doesn't look as good. On the square wave, on the square wave, does it? It looks a little bit. Oh, but the, the square wave doesn't determine the sound quality. It doesn't determine the sound quality. It just helps you easily see some things. You know, this is a bonus. We've got the frequency response here. All right, let's do a um, let's do a power test on it. That's the one that a lot of people want. So we're going to take that off a thousand watts now because that's what I was testing last. Uh, we're going to do steps. Yep, yep. 1% stop uh, and we're going to put a load impedance of 8 times there alright so we're good to run let's do that okie dokie well, that's not terribly bad let's go for we did our little crossover here around about uh, 0.1% distortion about 5 watts 0.1% uh, distortion Again, keeping that, it's dropping below 0.09%, that's at 10 watts. Uh, we get here to 20 watts, 0.05% distortion. So yeah, listening between, let's say, uh, 20, 20 watts there, and 40 watts, 0.075% distortion. Pretty good, and we only hit that. 1% which is here, the magical mark, which is there at 52.75 watts. Remember, I'm only putting in, uh, we got 32 volts per side. So in total, 64 uh, volts for the entire swing from uh, negative up to the positive peak or crest, and then back all the way down again to the negative side of our power supply. So that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Um, if we look at the crossover part here, at 51.36 volt, watts, watts, uh, we've got a 0.373% distortion on there. So, not too bad, not as pretty looking on the um, on the spectrum analyzer. We're going to check that signal in there. This time, just do a quick. Uh, oh no, sorry, not on the spectrum analyzer. On the on the square wave, even at the highest, and certainly not as. Uh, not as pretty as what we might like around about, let's say, 50, um, 50 hertz. Remember, guys, these are old circuits from back in the day, like back in the 70s, and they were not designed uh, to give you... You just you weren't going to get the range. And besides, even if you could buy an amplifier, which would have been really expensive, uh, and then you've got to be able to match it to some speakers and to get the full benefit of an amplifier that can go down to, let's say you can go down to 20 hertz and it's lovely, yeah? To get the full benefit out of that, you've got to have speakers that will, um, that will reproduce that for you. 
and chances are most people wouldn't have been able to have that so this would have been okay like i said before on these there's a bit of a uh, there's quite a few people who actually make these into put them into cases and such i don't know if it's just because there's no nothing else around when they decided to do that but um i've listened to them and i tell you what when you it's connected up to like a movie and stuff on the tv just plugged into you know output from the tv into it it sounds nice even the music sounds nice uh, and it's quite hard sometimes to hear the differences. There are subtle differences, but this is all going to be down to how you like to listen to your music. And, uh, and that's a subjective thing. What I'm trying to show you is objectivity, uh, just as you know, this puts it out. And all I can do is use the kit that I've got. So everything is obviously I'm using the same kit. I'm not, I'm not switching out between different... Uh, waveform generators and the different scope I don't want to do that I want to use exactly the same kit set up in exactly the same way uh, to get these outputs as a comparison against this rig setup all right a different setup may give slightly different results that's, that's all I can say on that right so this is uh the end of this I'll tell you what I will do if you've got this far I'm going to say thank you very much and what I will do is I will set up another one very very shortly I'm still trying to get my quad up in the air and I will set up a, uh, my quad as multi-rotor <laughs> for, uh, for uh, some viewers who get confused when I say quad they think it's an amplifier quad and it's not it's the uh, multi-rotor and uh, I will do a comparison I will use the TO well, one thing I'm going to do anyway in the background is I'm going to check against the other circuit identical that I've built and I'm going to see if the other um, little anomalies within the uh, the frequency is these bits here, whether they are present in the other circuit. They'll be interesting to see, even if it's just for myself, but I think I'm going to add it into the next video because I will do a comparison where we can overlay uh, the two outputs and just see what the difference is between the TO5 uh, and uh, these these uh, these chips here, the SC2500s. I believe that's what they are. And these are, uh, oh, it's the 247 package, isn't it? Well, yeah, I, I'll stick it up on the screen, so still, it still leads me. All right, right. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.